Hello everyone, Benjamin Lindsay here, Managing Editor at Backstage. Um, if you joined us the other day for our Backstage Live interview with Taylor Zakar Perez, um, you were in for a slight disappointment. Obviously there was a bit of a bug going around with Instagram right as we were starting our interview. So we started off with a great five, 10 minutes and then got cut short. So here we are today, reconnecting, re-talking about the Kissing Booth Three, super excited to continue our conversation and uh, see what he's all about. Talk about his acting journey, talk about his acting prep work, and uh, of course, give some advice to you actors and creators out there who want to get your start and follow in his footsteps. So uh, without further ado, I'll see if Taylor is on. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm going to give you a few more minutes just to jump in here. But Taylor, it looks like you're here and... Very excited to to reconnect. One moment. Hey there. What's How's going it? on? <laughs> Long time no see. I know. I know. Second time's a charm. I right? know. Second That's time's right. a charm. Um, <laughs> so, so sorry again for, for the little glitch that we had on Monday, but I'm really glad that we could sort this out to continue talking about your work in Kissing Booth 3. How's your week going? I imagine you're kind of making the rounds talking about this upcoming premiere. Yeah, uh, it's it's been a good week. Um, you know, I'm heading into town today, which is exciting. Uh, <laughs> you know, just trying to get back to normal a bit more. Um, but it's been a good week. Uh, surf, maybe surf later today. And um, yeah, keep, I guess, talk a little bit more on the press side of things. All right. Yeah, yeah. All sounds good. All sounds good. Well, um, just to just to get right into it, um, re really love your work in this film franchise, obviously. And to pick up where we left off, sure. you were kind of talking about your work with Joey King and kind of building a rapport with the cast and whatnot. But we actually didn't get to the crux of how you first got involved and cast okay. as Marco. Um, so I'd love to hear just your audition origin story and uh, <laughs> how you kind of came, came into the cards to, uh, to star in this, these two films. Sure. I mean, as you know, um, in the industry, you just get audition after audition and you give 110% every time and hope that something good comes out of it. Right. Um, and so this was the same as, you know, any other audition. It was the first of the year, um, kind of pre- pilot season usually it just I get you know pilots January February March um, never really any films and so this was kind of an anomaly for me and I've lived I've now lived here 11 years um, but I, I really don't think I've ever had an audition for a film in January um, so got a call with Gary Zuckerbrod and Kamala and had a, a great session um, Kamala was like you know just sitting there and was like let's do that again okay, let's do that again. And then she went and got Gary. And then she's like, okay, watch this. And then we watched, I guess they watched me do it again. And they're like, okay, cool. And then I went home and then got a call that Vince wanted to meet with me. So met with Vince the next day or maybe like a week or maybe it's like a week, a week later, Vince was there and then went back uh, home and just went out with my life. And then a couple of weeks later, they called me back again and asked me to have a, 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 a couple songs ready, a choreographed dance. And so, you know, got everything ready and it was, you know, freaky because on the breakdown, it said, please, please submit Eurovision, American Idol and X Factor stars. So, right. you know, so I'm, not you. <laughs> yeah, you're like, whoa, OK, so they're looking for like some crazy crazy person uh that you know just belting out these notes and so i was definitely intimidated but i, I called a friend and just to discuss it and they're like taylor you just finished auditioning for spielberg's west side story like you did a d dance you like did another dance you did songs like why are you so nervous about this? like i don't know i don't know i think just the breakdown kind of freaked me out for a second just you know because like I understand the theater world, but when it comes to like live television um, entertainment, I'm, I'm like very, I don't know. I was like, ah, I guess that's a different talent, you know? Right. Um, like being in front <laughs> of an audience, like singing and stuff. So that was, that was the journey. And then 
they were in South Africa already uh, on my, for my final one. Oh, no, wait. They were one, two, three. Four. My fourth one was with Joey. And that's when they were in South Africa. And they filmed me and uh, just had a, a great moment with Gary Zuckerbrod, um, casting director, who was giving me, you know, helping me along the way. And mm -hmm. Vince and Michelle and, and, and Joey was just such a, a giving acting partner in that moment, you know? And I feel like during chem reads like that, Either you're you're completely blocked from your the other actor, like they don't either they're not opening up to you, or they mm -hmm. don't like you, or they want their friend to get it. And you know, I've been in those situations before where like you know you have to kiss someone in the scene, and if they kind of pull away, and even though you talked about it beforehand, like it just people kind of do things to sabotage other actors. And luckily, I was not sabotaged, and <laughs> Joy was excellent, and we had a great time, and. Uh, Rest is history. Rest is history, as they say. Yeah, and I'm not surprised coming off the heels of this being one of Netflix's most successful original features. You had several rounds of auditions just to just to get into it. They were they yeah. were choosing from the cream of the crop. Well, um, the does, it, does it ever get easier? You you say that you've been in LA for 11 years now. Do you still get audition jitters? How, how do you kind of go about prepping for it? Oh, audition jitters. You know, I haven't been in an audition room in since like September of 2019 or maybe maybe not maybe, maybe October 2019 so I, I've just been doing it self tape wise or you know yeah. going to the studio and you know it, it's like less nerves and more um, I feel like projects that I'm getting now are a bit deeper than they were in you know over the past five years and you know mm -hmm. with, you know whether it's um with you know there's like a drug use scene or there's um uh, like it's crazy high stakes comedy or it's like a transformers action project where like you're just doing everything from your chair or from this spot you know it's i i think it's just more of i i, I really love the prep time because like when it's time to do it i'm like all in and mm -hmm. it, you know, it took me a while because like I, I couldn't drink coffee for a long time and people kept saying like take beta blockers take beta blockers and i just never wanted to have to rely on something that would calm my nerves before i went in for an audition mm -hmm. and and so i just like you know what i'm just gonna cut caffeine out and i found out that like the caffeine would make me super nervous even if i wasn't nervous yeah I got nervous with caffeine my um my palms would sweat my body would get extra hot and so i think i've just learned the tricks that my body has tried to like maybe as like a defense mechanism of like hey like maybe we don't get rejected again you know it's like, it's like, <laughs> right but it's like hey calm down and so i like worked against it and i'm like all right i now know how to audition properly um and i guess my my process is i mean i sit you know, like for hours going through the sides page by mm -hmm. page and just filling in the white space because i think um all of the good stuff is in the white space and you know just all of your thoughts um, i went to leslie khan and company for a long time mm -hmm. um, with a ta there and just comedy is very difficult and you know for me i'm, I'm very left-brained and so i get it like it was it was very easy for me to to like see the rules of comedy and then apply them when i was doing it and then like the biggest part right is letting go mm -hmm. um, but i don't think i'll ever stop writing and filling the pages and and you know marking the comma and period and exclamation and and terabang like it's just because it's also nuanced and um that's like really what helps you build your character because I, I think on a daily basis right like when we're talking conversation uh, this is i mean yeah this is like a continuation with the comma and stuff like that but then there's a dot 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 and you have another thought you know and there's just mm -hmm. it's it's just very so, yeah, each pro each each uh, audition is a, a long process, and I'm, I I love it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's funny that you mentioned that that no unpunctuation because I've spoken with so many actors over the years who kind of talk about the way that you find those natural beats, the way that you find a unique approach to the material. Um, Lori, Lori Metcalf, I remember she said that she writes in the margins or adds commas that weren't there so that she knows this is a unique reading of the material that that other people aren't going to bring to the table. So uh, it totally makes sense that you're filling up that white space and kind of finding your own yeah. way into it. Yeah. And, and you also, I mean, like you have to obviously respect the writer um, whenever you're doing something. Mm. And 
And um, it's so easy to go, oh, well, I would do this. If I was saying it, I would do it this way. And then you have to really go back in and go, wait, why did the writer set it up like this? Like, why is the beat, mm. why is the beat or the like then halfway down the page and I'm stopping a quarter way down the page for my beat? Like, it, there has to be a reason. And so yeah. there's, there's a reason for everything on that page. And from time to time, you know, there are typos and you're like, this doesn't make sense. And you realize it's a typo and just, you know, people make mistakes, but nine times out of 10. It's intentional. <laughs> it's intentional, yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, now, you also mentioned uh, you had to dance, you had to sing. I know that you learned to play the guitar for this role. Oh, um, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure it comes naturally to you now. It feels like a bit ago that you were needing to do that. But uh, I, I also know that you, you kind of cut your teeth in musical theater in Chicago, is that right? Yeah, so I, I grew up um, in the Chicago, my family's from Chicago. And then we lived about 45 minutes out of the city. And I would do musical theater, like I would go to school, and then I would go to do theater at night, just because I couldn't, I, I knew I liked being in theater, but I, I swam and we, we were state championships nationally ranked. And so we kind of never had any off time, like we would swim from se uh, August until February and then the next month we would go back in the summer season and then we get like two weeks off and go back so just year round <laughs> kind of kind of sport and so the only way that I could do theater or any kind of creative um, activity would be at theater in the town over or the, the city <laughs> over so um, I would go to different um, areas that had you know auditions and whether it be like you know Music Man or West Side Story or Catherine called Birdie or, a, you know, Shakespeare, like insert any, the musical or non-musical uh, play here. Uh, and I was just doing it. I just felt like, I just, I, I also just liked getting out of the high school scene because mm -hmm. I don't know, it felt like more like an adult. I felt like I was training myself to not be involved with, you know, the theater kids at my school that were super dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, high drama even the teachers were high drama like I, I just I just could not I just wasn't raised that way my dad was always like keep it to yourself like just do the work put your head down and go and so I think that that might have been actually my um my reason for wanting to do theater like somewhere else and he agreed yeah that was uh that's cool well what, what, what do you credit with kind of planting the seed of interest in the performing arts in the first place because it sounds like you were plenty busy without it <laughs> yeah um my parents like my parents were not in that scene whatsoever like my my dad um and his family owned a, a car collision center like a body shop um and my mom also worked at the business and then you know she she modeled for a while when she was younger and so they had like they had an understanding of it a little just from what they heard and my cousin being in los angeles and doing it and they just love taking us downtown to watch shows like you know whether it was um like an old show from the 80s that they heard i i don't even know how they got into it really like i i think they they always wanted to do it but never really could or never mm -hmm. really knew how to and um my, actually my grandma my my grandma on my dad's side was super musical like when she went into you know like the 50 and over living um uh what's it called like just big community yeah um, she was like doing theater nonstop, and she was directing and um tap dance like she tap danced for like 30 or 40 years so probably came down from her and then she would sing us songs and then and we really, really never knew what they were and then we would finally see them when we would go to the theater like oh that's like grandma like grandma sings that song and, like we always joke about it and then i think you know sometimes you joke about something so much that it like becomes a reality yeah like, oh, <laughs> and then here you are yeah yeah <laughs> that's great that's great yeah i mean it, it's funny the way that these things find different avenues from being an interest as a young kid to doing it extracurricularly to all of a sudden oh you're moving to la you've been there for 11 years and here you are doing the actual thing yeah, um, i know right what, what, what advice would you give someone who is looking to follow in your footsteps i mean you you've been at this for a, a while now you yep. you your first screen credit was iCarly back in the day is that right yes and they cut me out you, was, you weren't you weren't in the final cut i didn't even know it was it was like uh 
of the lip. It, I get hit with a lemon in the face and fall to the ground. And we had, you know, we had, it was like a complete, like, guest star, carved out, nice arc, Carly's boyfriend. And then when they came down to shooting day, they were like, so here are the new sides. And I think my, my, my line was like, hey, Carly, I just brought you some. And it gets hit in the face. I was like, and that was the whole thing. <laughs> yes, oh, man. heartbreaking. And, uh, and it's funny, I have a friend who's a casting associate now that's now working with those casting directors. And they were like, remember, we casted Taylor on his first project, you know, 10 years ago. So, you know, it's funny how everyone remembers. Uh, but advice, you know, like moving to a city, or I, I'll just say moving to Los Angeles mm -hmm. uh, is very, it's, it's just full of temptations, whether it's going out to party, whether it's, um, I, 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 I mean, just, I'll just say partying. Yeah, partying or working your butt off. And um, I think the number one advice would be to live your life. And I did not take that bit of advice forever because when you get an audition and you have no way to relate a real life situation with this scene you're doing mm -hmm. it becomes 10 times harder and like now you're substituting even more or now you're as ifing even more and sometimes it's just so nice to be able to go oh this has happened to me okay and then you put it into the mind of the character but if you are living this like studious life in the library like reading um plays and like not having any real-time experience outside of reading these plays or doing these plays like you really, um, you're kind of like a shell of a human <laughs> in a mm -hmm, way. Mm -hmm. And it's apparent when you walk into the casting offices that you, you're you coming in like as a student that has studied their test and they are ready to get an A plus on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I had a friend a long time ago say, you can't walk into the audition room with your, um, pulling your, your horse cart in. You have to bring it in unassembled and assemble the horse cart for the casting director. Mm -hmm. And then you can walk out with it fully assembled. Like, yeah. you, just, you, you can't bring in this, this um, bronzed, bronzed audition. So I would say that'd be the first thing. You just have a life, have a life. Um, yeah. Secondly, would be to find a group of people that you love and connect with and can create with. Um, because it's hard. I mean, I, I get it. I get into a class. I mean, you're not going to find anyone if you're not in a class, either, whether it's Improv, um, I mean, Upright Citizens Brigade, like, I mean, there's I.O. West, um, Groundlings, uh, like that, or you can go to, I mean, Leslie Kahn, I, the, I love Leslie Kahn, she's on uh, La Brea in Hollywood, because she gives you a community, like, yes, you're understanding comedy, screen analysis, script analysis, um, just, you know, you're getting in those 10,000 hours, but mm -hmm. you're also you're paying for a community you're paying whatever a few hundred bucks a month to have people that will rehearse with you for three hours a day and you know that four hundred dollars you're spending for once a week on wednesday is 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 nothing if you count in all the people that give up their time to come act with you and get better so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that i mean i have i still have my group of five friends um not all of them are in the industry anymore like maybe they're writing now i want to be director but those are my people for five years um doing auditions with i mean because there's and we live in the world of self-tapes now too so you need to have a friend that you know can coach you self-tape you um you could do the same for them and like run mm -hmm. around town because it's really hard to be solo out here it's um really hard to not have that community and support because you're all going through the same thing yeah you know, yeah you're and it's more, it's more than a social community. It's a support group. It's collaborators. I mean, it, it's really essential to, yeah. to find your footing in a new place. Absolutely. Yeah. Like to know that you're not alone as well, because I mean, you like you have times when you get to class and you're like nailing it, you're nailing it week after week. And then you're auditioning week after week and you're nailing it. And like, I, I mean, I remember just like sitting in class one time and I just like started bawling, you know, I was like, what like what else can I do? Like I am rehearsing. I mean, this is probably like year seven or year eight. You know, like and I was working. You know, but I want. Of course, you always want more. Like I think the human mm -hmm. 
like, I always want more. And I was like, what, like, what can help me 10 X, like my acting career, like make me better? Like, how can I listen better? Like, how can I be better in comedy? Like what, just how do you get better? And I had a shirt on that said super okay on it. And the class just made fun of me because they're like, it's so funny that you're like bawling right now and you have a shirt that says super okay. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I was like, that is funny. But you know, I think we all have those moments in our career. And I mean, I think all careers everywhere, but especially in the, in the creative arts where you're just like giving all of yourself. And it's not about like paperwork and it's not about filing and it's not about presentations. It's like, about you sitting alone or with friends and doing the work and like scraping up all these emotions and like not going anywhere, but just knowing, like if, if you have that like undying desire and undying um, work ethic that you know that like this is for you and I will be successful and, and nothing can stop you, I think that's the only way you can be successful. I mean, yeah, you, yeah. you have to dig in and say no to I mean I said no to a lot of a lot of stuff um but I don't regret it I, I really I really yeah. don't no it's it's all building blocks and I mean you, you say that you, you were sobbing in acting class seven years in and now you're 11 and uh you're starring in a new Netflix <laughs> film so it's all yeah. good it all works out in the end um but uh I, I feel like those are perfect little bits of wisdom to wrap this conversation on um, super excited to see what you do next. Congrats again on the kissing booth. And it's, it's been great to reconnect here. Thanks for sharing your time. Yeah, likewise. Thank you for, uh, for asking. Yeah, of course. Of course. We'll be in touch. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.